Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Welcome back, everyone. We're here today with episode 2496 of the Cabral Concept. We're going to be going over vitamin D symptoms and going over basically what goes on in the body, what are the telltale signs if you have low vitamin D. We're moving into that season right now, but do keep in mind, I've been testing vitamin D for a long time in my practice, over a decade, and I can tell you for sure that almost just like omega-3s, only about three people out of 100 that I test actually have adequate vitamin D levels if they are not getting adequate sunlight, nutritional supplements, et cetera. We'll talk about the high vitamin D foods today too. So just keep in mind, if you're not already doing something about it, the likelihood that you have low vitamin D uh, is very, very high. And it's so easy to test now. Now again, you can test it with your PCP uh, by asking for a 25 hydroxy vitamin D test, or you can run your own vitamin D lab right at home, which is probably, honestly, less than the cost of the copay uh, that your PCP is going to charge you. But I'll let you figure that out, whatever works better for you. Um, so here, what I want to do is just give you essentially eight, nine, ten symptoms, the top ones that you're going to see uh, and see if they match up. I think it's just so important to start to get used to what our body is telling us in terms of nutrient deficiencies and sometimes toxicities. And today, we're going to talk about vitamin D deficiencies, all right? So the very, and then again, I'll get to some medications that lower vitamin D. I'll get to some foods that help fortify uh, vitamin D, uh, sunlight, how much you should supplement with, if, if at all, and we'll go from there, all right? So first one is this. If you are someone suffering from fatigue, diagnosis of chronic fatigue or whatever it might be, just keep in mind, if you're dealing with fatigue, you want to look at your vitamin D levels, all right? So overall lethargy, brain fog, uh, not enough energy when you're waking up and really throughout the day. I think it's important to look at this. I really do, especially if it's in more of like the winter-based months where you're not getting out and getting as much sun, all right? So... First one, vitamin D fatigue. The second is that your sleep is off. So a lot of people don't attribute this to vitamin D. But you have to understand is that vitamin D affects your overall adrenal and thyroid status. It affects your into all of your hormones, okay? So let's look at it this way. If vitamin D is crucial to thyroid health, and we understand that thyroid is essentially one of the regulators of our, let's call it metabolic rate or thermostat in our body, or our body's ability to help work with the adrenals to produce energy from like 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and then start to shut it down from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., the diurnal rhythm is called, right? Two parts of the day, up and down. We don't want to be up when we're supposed to be down, and we don't want to be down when we're supposed to be up. And now again, I know some people work overnights. It, it is what it is, right? That's part of your job. It doesn't mean that it's ideal, but I have many podcasts on how to, um, as best you can, alleviate the symptoms from working overnight. Because the truth is this, we're meant to get blue light, sunlight, vitamin D earlier in the day. That helps with energy production. That helps with mood, right? And then it helps with sleep at night. So we want to be able to turn the cortisol levels off at night, and turn up those melatonin levels. Vitamin D helps with these things. The third one is this, bone pain or achiness. This may seem strange, right? Like how do you have bone pain? But vitamin D is essential for building up and rejuvenating the bones. The bones break down like tissue turns over in general, muscles. You have to understand is that your body needs vitamin D. You might say, well, no, I heard calcium makes up bones. Got it, understood, don't disagree. But you need calcium, and calcium needs magnesium, vitamin D, vitamin K. Typically, we're using K2 as one of those adjuncts, uh, strontium, and other minerals as well. Vitamin D, though, is what helps the uptake of calcium. So really important that we're getting the vitamin D in there. All right, the next one is this. And this is a game changer for many people. Honestly, if you have low mood or depression, 
seasonal affective disorder, you have to have your vitamin D levels checked. All right, so now we're gonna get to the point, I, I just because I need to throw this in right here. Your levels can't just be okay. Meaning like on traditional, and, and I'll even see if I can link this up to like WebMD or something, but let's just see if I can get it for you. Because I know that they're gonna say, and they always have, that vitamin D levels uh, should be between 30 and 100. Yes, there it is right there. And who's saying this? And this is even on PubMed, okay. So levels below 30, uh, let's see, like, yeah, levels below 30 are too low and might weaken your bones and affect your overall health. Okay, but actually, well now, get in, this is the change of the times. They're saying that adequate is probably 50 or above. So again, like I love to see that eventually natural health speaks loud enough, pushes hard enough, and we start to move things more to the mainstream. Like, okay, 30 is acceptable, sure. You won't get rickets, like a oh, great, you know? But what about your overall health and mood? No, and your immune system, we'll get to that one. 50 to 70, 50 to 80. That's where you need to be on your blood work, all right? So when you run your blood work, the 30s are not okay. 37 is not okay, 32 is not okay, 31 is not okay, it's not okay. You wanna be between 50 and 80, all right? 50 and 70 is fine, like that's great. You don't wanna be too high either. We'll talk about that on another show but you wanna be optimal, all right? So again, especially if you're dealing with depression, low mood, seasonal affective disorder, and again, we're not providing any medical advice, medical treatment plans, medical diagnosis, medical cures, but we are telling you there's underlying root causes to these things. It's not just about taking an SSRI. Optimize your vitamin D, optimize your gut health, right? Optimize your B vitamins, magnesium. All these things are crucial for your body, zinc. All right, the next one is this, hair loss. Hair loss, well, we attribute it to what a lot? Oh, I don't have enough biotin. I don't have enough zinc. I don't have enough copper, right? Like, yes, all of those things are crucial, but so is vitamin D. Vitamin D is absolutely essential to strong, healthy hair. Why? Think about it. It helps with the tissue formation of things like skeletal muscle, bone, and hair is no different. So we have to make sure we understand that this hair is protein. This is tissue. We need to keep it healthy. We need enough vitamin D. The next one, well, muscle, right? So there we are. So muscle aches, pains, weakness. If you're suffering from any one of those things, kind of sounds like fibromyalgia, right? Well, I've done, I haven't done the research. I've shared with you the research that I've done, that I've studied from others doing the research, is oftentimes with fibromyalgia, people have those low vitamin D levels. They go to their PCP, and the PCP is like, no, your levels are fine. It's a 32. Well, it's not fine. Again, it's not, it's not okay. It's not optimal. All right, so let's get those levels at an adequate number. We'll, we'll share with how to do that in just a moment. All right, uh, the next one here is loss of appetite. So let's say that, you know, all of a sudden you're like, I just haven't been hungry lately. Or, you know, I just, I kind of feel like I get full easily. That can be a lack of vitamin D as well. Think about it as well in terms of overall metabolic rate, the power of the thyroid, the energy that you're producing and your appetite, they all go together, all right? So really important. Low energy, low appetite, check those vitamin D levels. The next one I wanna share with you is the weakening of your immune system. Now, what I mean by that is this. You get sick more often or it takes you longer to recover from a cold. So if you find yourself getting sick more than, let's say, five or six times a year, that would be most likely too much. Right? It's most likely as an adult, not a child, but most likely as an adult, that's a lot, right? Two, three sickness, colds a year that you recover within three to four days, totally normal. It's your immune system. It encounters a new virus or bacteria. <coughs> Excuse me. It produces the right antibodies to diffuse those antigens, and you recover within a few days, right? It takes you two weeks, three weeks to recover from that. Could be, well, for sure, it's an imbalance in the immune system, and you may want to look at vitamin D as part of that. Vitamin C, antioxidants, zinc, uh, all these things are crucial, of course, but so is vitamin D. All right, so how much vitamin D do you need? Most people need about 36 IUs, 35, 36 IUs per pound of body weight. That's it. So like, let's do a little math here together. Let's say you weigh 130 pounds, 130 times, let's just use 35. It's an even number. Not really even, but you know what I'm saying. It's uh, 4,000, that is not right. So let's do 135 times 35. 
Yeah, you're at uh, you're over 4,000 IUs. That's right. That's and so I always just share with people, the average individual needs between 4,000 and 5,000 IUs per day in order to be within the 50 to 80 range. Now, conventional medicine will tell you most adults only need 2,000 IUs per day. That's typically excuse me. That's typically adequate. And the reason why they say that is because that will get you above 30 on your blood work, right? So we have to keep in mind, there's a big difference between optimal and adequate not to get rickets or you know some type of bone degenerative disease, right? So let's look at that. So um, it's fairly easy to do. You can get it through nutritional supplements, which are inexpensive. You just wanna make sure that you're going for the vitamin D3 form. Vitamin D3, it should say on it, really important, not vitamin D2. Most fortified foods like cereals, et cetera, are fortified with vitamin D2. I did a show that we will link up today. So if you go to stephencabral.com forward slash 2496, I shared essentially, um, should you take vitamin D all year round? That was episode 2441. And I believe on that show, I shared with you how vitamin D is synthesized from the sun or vitamin D3 nutritional supplements versus D2, all right? And it's, they're different pathways. So they have to get converted differently in the liver. All right, so it's really important to look at that. All right, so let's say that those fortified foods are not a good source of vitamin D. Most individuals, 2,000 to 4,000 IUs for an adult. For children, again, it depends on their weight, 500 to 1,000 IUs for most children. Okay, and again, you should test your blood work because only your blood work will tell you, are you getting enough adequate vitamin D? All right, so the best way to get vitamin D for sure is the sun, but most people don't get a tan. And if they get a tan, they don't get a full body tan. They might like tan their arms, right? Or they go to the beach once a week. That's probably not enough to raise your vitamin D levels, but again, you have to test. I'll link up a test that you can do right at home at stephencabral.com forward slash 2496. That'll tell you for sure if you're getting enough vitamin D. All right, let's say you wanna to try to get some from food as well. Fatty fish, all right? so. Um, trout, salmon, mackerel, those are great. They're also high in omegas, so that's a really nice one. Yes, you can get it from tuna, but tuna can be very high in mercury, so you just have to be careful with that one. Sardines can be another great one with the skin on, all right? So skin on uh, is important as well because that skin is going to give you more of the vitamin D3. Egg yolks, that can be another great one, assuming they're pastured-based eggs. Beef liver, fish liver, like cod liver oil or fish oil, uh, those can typically be, although you know what? Fish oil is not going to, cod liver could, but it's not a lot of vitamin D. So that's the thing I wanna share with you. Whether you're eating beef liver, egg yolks, or uh, wild you know, fish, it's not a lot of vitamin D. Like it's probably not going to raise your levels to where they need to be if you're not getting adequate sunlight. So adequate sunlight is the, is the thing that you need. And if you're not getting that and you are eating these good high quality vitamin D foods, you're still probably gonna have to supplement. Again, you can prove me wrong. I'm, I'm always happy to have that, I really am, because the data is what speaks. So if your lab numbers are correct, then you're good, right? The amount of sun you get, plus those foods could be totally adequate for you. Just keep in mind, very few people reach that number without being in direct sunlight more days than not per week, um, and uh, then eating some of these good quality foods. If not, most people have supplement. I supplement, it's easier, um, I still get, sun, there's no doubt about it, but I'm not like getting a tan Monday through Friday because I'm working, you know, in my office. <laughs> so, you know, that's kind of the way that it is. Uh, but again, you do what works for you. Now, I just want to share with you, and then I'll link up some additional shows on vitamin D cofactors. Like if you're already taking vitamin D supplementation uh, or the sun and you're not converting it, I've, I'll share some additional shows. Okay. So, Few things, if you're taking laxatives, if you're on cholesterol lowering medication, if you're on prednisone, uh, if you're on some weight loss based drugs, uh, if you're on seizure based medication, all of these things can actually uh, hurt your absorption and utilization of vitamin D. So that could be why you have low vitamin D as well. So I just wanted to put that out there, especially for practitioners out there working with clients. If you have digestive issues, um, colitis, Crohn's, IBS, IBD, inflammation in the gut, you might not be absorbing vitamin D very well. So we need to fix the digestive issues, of course. So you can run the bacteria and parasite stool test uh, to do that, to figure out what exactly is going on with your digestive system, uh, or the candida metabolic and vitamins test, or both. And then also, 
Um, I, like I said, there's cofactors for vitamin D. So I'm going to link up the show on vitamin D cofactors at stephencabral.com forward slash 2496. <clears throat> it's a whole nother show. Tells you, teaches you how to get vitamin D, take vitamin D, along with different um, vitamins and minerals that are needed to help with that vitamin D absorption. So hopefully this show is helpful. Again, if you have any of these symptoms, look deeper into, are your vitamin D levels low? Run it with your PCP, run it with Equal Life, run it with whoever you'd like to run it with. Find out if you're not adequate between that 50 and 70 or 1580, and then if not, start to get more sun, uh, supplement as needed, get those good, healthy, quality vitamin D-based foods, and uh, I'm, I'm telling you right now, it could be absolutely what seems like miraculous in your life for the turnaround in a lot of these health issues. So hopefully this was helpful. Thanks so much, everyone, for tuning in. Of course, feel free to share the show with anyone you believe it could serve. Are you ready to heal yourself and then go on to heal others? If so, the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute can help you discover proven functional medicine protocols that blend the best of seven different healing disciplines from around the world. I personally share with you the exact handouts and protocols I use in my private practice that enable people to get well, lose the weight, and live longer, stronger. I want to pass this information on to the next generation of health coaches, and that is exactly why I created IHP. We are the future of the health coaching industry, and the skills and knowledge you will learn will make you an in-demand certified health coach anywhere in the world. Although we have many medical professionals taking the IHP certifications, no experience is necessary, and half our members have no previous health certifications. At the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute, our motto is a health coach in every home. Our goal is that you take this knowledge and then share it with family, friends, loved ones, your community, or in a practice where you create a career you love and can be proud of. The global IHP community is filled with some of the most kind and caring people in the world, and we can't wait to welcome you into our world soon. For more information or to set up a discovery call with one of our IHP Health Coach graduates, simply head over to integrativehealthpractitioner.org.